Hello everyone and welcome to the final round of the 2020 Tata Steel Masters edition. It's uh, Vladislav Artemiev versus uh, Fabiano Corona. Fabiano Corona already won the tournament since he's uh, a half a point uh, in the lead, uh, a point and a half in the lead ahead of Magnus Carlsen. Uh, but uh, still, you you always want to uh, play that last game of the tournament uh, well. So let's see how this goes. And also, uh, congratulations to Spain for winning the World Handball Championship. Uh, I don't really watch handball, but I did watch the finals and it, it, it was quite the game. So congratulations on that. And also, I would just like to say that the uh, video team from the Granky Chess Classic sent me a trailer uh, to the, um, for their upcoming Granky uh, 2020. So if you want to check it out, it will be uh, the link. Uh, the first thing you will see in the description below. It's about one minute long, so feel free to check it out. That being said, uh, let's check out the game. Uh, Artemiev opens with knight to f3. So the Reti opening is on the board. We have d5 by Fabi and now g3, the king's Indian attack. Uh, we have knight to d7 and now c4. Uh, Fabi captures, d captures on c4, queen a4 going back after the pawn. And now a6, preparing b5, which would uh, cement that pawn on c4. So of course Artemiev captures it and b5, pushing the queen back. We have queen to c2 and now bishop to b7. Uh, bishop to g2, Artemiev continues development, knight to g2 f6 and now castles. Uh, we have e6 by Fabi, preparing to develop the dark square bishop and d3, Artemiev does the same. Uh, we have bishop to e7 and now a4, uh, of course you want to attack this nice expansion Fabi has on the queen side, and now c5. Uh, so uh, we have uh, first before capturing here, uh, knight to c3. We have queen to b6 by Fabi developing and now a captures on b5, which uh, uh, shows that Artemiev wants to trade rooks along the a file. We have rook captures on a8, bishop captures, uh, and now bishop to g5. Uh, we have castles by Fabi and now uh, rook back, uh, well, the other rook comes to a1. Uh, we have h6 asking Artemiev what do you want to do with the bishop, uh, put it back or... Uh, uh, trade for the knight here, Artemiev captures, we have bishop captures on f6, and now uh, this position has been reached before in 2017 uh, between uh, Sergei uh, Matsenko and Ilya Nezhnik, uh, where queen to b3 was played, and queen to b3 is actually one of the engine stop recommendations, so uh, it's safe to say, safe to assume actually that um, uh, Artemiev is no longer uh, in book, so he goes knight to d2, offers a trade of light square bishops, we have bishop captures on g2, king captures, Captures and now rook to c8. So here, by playing rook to c8, uh, uh, Fabi says that uh, he he is maybe interested in playing c4. But here we have queen to b3 uh, by Artemiev, preventing that, uh, showing that uh, uh, from the game we mentioned in 2017, queen to b3. Uh, well, b3 is actually the, the, a good square for the queen because now. Uh, Fabi has the option of pushing c4, but c4 is basically a draw offer, because after the c4 move, you would see d captures on c4, queen to c6 with check, uh, now after the king moves, king g1, now you capture on c4, attack the queen, queen a4, offer a queen trade, queen b7, attack the, the b2 pawn, and now knight captures on c4. And now after knight b6, uh, you attack the queen and the knight, captures, captures, you get this position where White is up a pawn, but white will not be able to keep the pawn. Uh, there's the threat of queen captures on b2, and also the threat of just bishop captures follows by uh, rook captures pawn, so you cannot uh, really cover both threats. So uh, Fabi could go for c4 if he's interested, uh, which is, like I said, a draw offer, and he already won the tournament. Uh, it doesn't really matter to him if he draws this game, and he has the black pieces against Artemiev, which is not, not a bad deal. Uh, but Fabi decides he wants to play on, which uh, uh, which is why he moves the rook back to b8. So uh, if he wanted to play rook to b8, he could have done so right away, but uh, here he just says, I'm not just yet uh, convinced that that uh, we're, we're going to draw this game. So knight c to e4, putting pressure on the bishop and the c5 pawn. Fabi goes back, bishop e7, nicely, uh, providing more, uh, more defense to the c5 pawn, and now king g1. The king will be much safer here. You don't have to constantly check out for any, any checks along the light square diagonal after the knight from e4 moves. Uh, and now f5 by Fabi. Uh, yes, the, the e6 pawn is somewhat weak now, but uh, Fabi decides that, that it's okay. So knight back to c3 and now knight to e5. An excellent square for the knight if he can keep it there. 
uh, and here h3, taking away the g4 square from Fabi's knight, we have h5, uh, and now uh, knight to f3, offering a trade of knights, we have knight captures, uh, and now uh, e captures uh, on f3, getting this setup uh, that uh, well, uh, Ju and Jun had against Goryachkina, if you've uh, checked out the, the final game of the Rapids. Uh, we have bishop to f6 by Fabi, and now rook to e1, trying to pile up uh, on the weak e6 pawn, but here king to f7. Uh, Fabi decides that this is okay, there's no way to exploit this spin. Uh, and also, while watching the, the coverage on chess 24, young Gustafsson mentioned briefly that... Uh, uh, Fabi actually uh, plays plants versus zombies. Now, I don't know if, if this is true, but if, if that is so, I, I commend him. That is an excellent game. Uh, only part one. I did not enjoy part two. Uh, but yeah, plants versus zombies, really, really an awesome game. Uh, but yeah, king to f7 by Fabi, and now uh, knight to e2. With knight to e2, Artemiev tries to bring yet a third attacker to the e6 pawn. So knight e2, and here uh, Fabi goes g5. He says, uh, no, you don't. Uh, h4 was also a possibility here, trying to create some weaknesses on the king's side, but Artemiev is very low on time, and Fabi says, okay, g5 uh, just takes away the f4 square from uh, from your knight, and you have four 14 minutes on the clock, I have more than half an hour, uh, and uh, it's only move 27, so you ne still need to make 13 more moves uh, to reach time control. Uh, so Artemiev goes g4. Uh, so what do you do here? H captures on g4, we have h captures on g4, f captures on g4, f captures on g4, and now uh, queen to d6. Here, Fabi centralizes his queen, and he wants to bring the rook over to h8 to go after queen to h2. If he can do that, uh, should be should be a very nice position for him. So, knight g3 by Artemiev, blocking this diagonal, and also preparing to bring the knight over to e4, which will be an excellent square for him. Queen to d5, now Fabi offers a queen trade, uh, if if uh, uh, Artemiev obliges this will fix Fabi's pawn structure, uh, resulting in him having only two pawn islands, whereas Artemiev will have three pawn islands, and these are, well, three very dangerous gentlemen, I, I might call him gentlemen from now on since you guys enjoy it so much, uh, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, so queen to d5, uh, Artemiev does not want to trade queens, queen back to c2, and now bishop to d4. Nicely pinning the f-pawn, which uh, comes in handy in, in a lot of lines, and also still just preparing rook to h8, which will put pressure on the h1 square, so the knight will not be able to move. Uh, but uh, queen to e2 now, uh, and here we have uh, rook to h8, as planned. And now knight to e4. Uh, uh, if you don't move the knight to e4, your knight will not be able to move uh, to, to, to some other squares. Uh, and also here is just an excellent square for the knight, since uh, Fabi does not have a d pawn to kick it away, Fabi does not have an f pawn to kick it away, and he doesn't have, well, sorry, <laughs> that was a glitch, uh, he doesn't have a light square bishop, so the knight uh, can stay there for as long as, uh, as, long as he wants. Uh, we have queen back to e5 by Fabi, going after queen to h2 now. Uh, and here, queen to f3 check, the only good idea for Artemiev, king to g7, and here Artemiev has only one and a half minute on the clock, uh, whereas Fabi has 22 minutes, and it's only move 35, so five more moves uh, for Artemiev to reach time control. And here, well, it's a very interesting position, uh, you can even pause the video and try to find uh, a move for Artemiev while, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, to, to find uh, a usable move for Artemiev here, congratulations, you are uh, an excellent spotter of moves uh, under uh, immense pressure. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, Artemiev played b3 here, uh, which just gets the pawn out, out of harm's way. But there is also the rook to e2 move, and this seems to be the way to go, as it clears uh, the path for the king to escape if needed, but also... Uh, it uh, provides protection to the b2 pawn, not in a way that you can't capture it. The point is, if you capture the pawn here, then the point is you play knight to g3, which prevents the queen from re reaching h2, but also uh, opens up an attack against the black queen. And now after you move the queen, let's say queen f6, now you play queen to uh, f7 check, not knight h5. Knight h5 seems reasonable because it uh, forks the king and the queen, but here black would actually just give up the rook, it's not a problem. Uh, and after captures, captures, uh, now you can just uh, capture the rook, uh, g captures on h5, and after bishop c3, it's still uh, fairly drawish, since it's four pawns to three. Yes, you do have a rook against the bishop, but this pawn will easily fall, so it's it's actually four pawns against two. 
black will be able to, to draw this game. So basically the point is, after this, uh, if you go for this bishop captures on b2 line, uh, you go knight g3, and then now you go uh, queen f6, like we said, offering a trade, but now queen b7, now not knight h5. This comes with check, king moves, and then now you go queen to c6, threatening rook captures here. Not much you can do here with black. You cannot defend since the queen covers that, uh, and well, uh, there there is not much you can do. Uh, you, you could try something like this, but then you no longer guard the bishop here. So let's say just uh, queen e4 check and next move you, you, you can just pick up the, the bishop. So uh, that's uh, uh, one of the things that, that can happen. So after rook to e2, capturing here, not an option. You could go for queen h2 check, but then just king f1. And, and now how do you continue the attack? Rook f8 attacks the queen, but now queen g2. And after queen to f4... Now you go knight to d2, and now you expose the, the attack towards the d6 pawn. And with the, the queen constantly eyeing b7, it is a sufficient means to, to, to hold this. Uh, so after this uh, queen, king g7, uh, rook to e2, definitely an option, but under uh, really uh, immense time pressure, uh, finding such moves, uh, de definitely not an option. So b3, Bartemiev not allowing captures, uh, and now comes uh, rook to f8 by Fabi. Queen to h2 check doesn't really do anything it just runs into pretty much the same defense only you no longer have a, a, a target on b2 so fabi switches the rook to f8 instead queen back to e2 and then now comes queen d5 again uh, an excellent square for the queen but putting pressure on the b3 pawn and now again what do you do here here artemiev played rook to f1 uh, he wants to play rook f1, king g2, play f3, and says that this holds. Uh, but there was also the very interesting king to h2 line immediately unpinning. And if queen captures on b3, then you go queen d2. And now you might have some problems guarding the g5 pawn. Uh, for example, if rook to f4, now you play f3 and... Uh, well, it's uh, it, it's a very sturdy setup, but point is that, uh, well, you, you can never capture on f3 because a queen captures on g5, so now the rook is pretty much stuck here. Uh, and there's always just a knight captures on g5 will be an idea, so uh, a, a lot of good ideas here. So, uh, rook to f1 instead by Artemiev makes sense since uh, if you move the knight, you, you never want rook captures or, or bishop captures to be an option, so rook is a nice defender here. King g6 by Fabi now adds another defender to the g5 pawn, and now queen d1. Here Artemiev defends the b3 pawn, and now finally Fabi goes for the breakthrough, c4. And okay, b captures on c4, we have b captures, and now you cannot capture because of captures. Uh, so here, uh, king to g2, and this is already move 40, so both players have reached time control with this move. King g2, now Artemiev prepares to play f3, but it requires giving up a pawn. So here... Uh, we have bishop to a7 by Fabi. Also, an option was ro just rook to f4 and after f3 creating a pass pawn by playing c3. But Fabi decides against it. He decides for bishop to a7. Uh, and now, after f3, uh, you still can't capture here because the knight hangs. So f3, this is a crucial move for, for defending. But now c captures on d3. Now Fabi grabs a pawn and also creates a nice passed pawn. And uh, again, what do you do here? Why is uh, uh, the the line we've shown rook to f4 followed by uh, sorry rook to f4 the line we've shown followed by creating a pass pawn by just pushing it to c3 is preferred by the engine uh, with uh, but but it's uh, hard to understand why of course and it seems like every game Fabi plays it's like only Fabi is able to 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 make sense of these uh, insane lines. Uh, but okay, here Artemiev played queen to a1, and it makes sense. Uh, he guards the, the f6 square, so if the rook ever moves, queen f6 check pretty much uh, uh, guarantees a draw at least. Uh, and even if the rook leaves the, the back rank, then also queen to h8 will be an idea in, in a lot of lines. But there was also the queen to d2 line, which just puts pressure on the g5 pawn. And uh, again, it's uh, now the queen cannot move. You have to keep an eye on the g5 pawn. So that line paralyzes the rook. This line paralyzes the queen. Also an option. So now after rook c2, uh, rook c8 going for rook to c2. Now you block rook c1. And after captures, captures. Now, let's say bishop b6. You cannot cross the d2 square. So you have to hel uh, have help from the bishop. If you can get bishop to a5 in, that could be handy. But king f1. And now, if you go bishop to a5, now you have queen a1, and now you have problems. Queen threatens queen f6, but also queen to h8. So now, you can go back, bishop d8, guarding this square, but now queen to h8 ensures a draw for Artemiev. For example, if d2, you, you just have a perpetual here. There's not much you can do here with, with the pawn and knight guarding all of these squares. 
So queen to d2, uh, an improvement on Artemiev's move. Artemiev goes queen to a1 instead. So like we said, that line paralyzes the queen. This line paralyzes the rook. Uh, but now uh, Fabi's queen is free to roam. So Fabi goes bishop to e3. Always, uh, this always reminds, yes, and the bishop, of course, of course, is under attack. Uh, this always reminds me of uh, the old uh, Josh Waitzkin's the square left behind. So here in that line, queen d2, the e3 square was taken. Now bishop to e3 by Fabi. And okay, the bishop also covers d2 square, so you can push the pawn to d2. So rook to d1 by Artemiev, and now as the queen can move, uh, queen to c4. The idea is queen to c4 check. So Artemiev blocks, he wants to trade queens, but Fabi says no, no way. Uh, queen to a2 check. And now if you move the king, if you go anywhere along the h file, uh, just rook h8 is enough. But if you go king to f1, then queen to e2 is mate. So uh, Artemiev has to block knight to d2, but now queen to c2. And now it's very hard to find a move for Artemiev. Uh, for example, if you trade queens, it's just lost. Uh, you either lose the rook or you move the rook and you lose the knight. So here uh, Artemiev played queen to e5, but now comes bishop captures on d2. Uh, Fabi just grabs a, gr uh, grabs a clean piece. And he, of course, had to calculate that this does not result in a perpetual. So queen captures on e6 was played, king g7. Queen e7 check, rook f7, queen e5 check, king back to f8, queen to b8 with check, king e7. You have to go for, for a nice walk with the king. Queen e5 check, king d8, we have queen to b8 with check, now king d7. Uh, queen to b7 check, and now king d6. We have queen b6 check, king to e5, uh, and queen to b5 check. We have king d4, and now queen to b6 again with check. King to c4, and queen e6 check. And Fabi just hides the king, king c3. So now you don't really gain anything if you capture... If you capture it, just bishop f4 opens up a discovery. If you go down the board, then uh, queen captures rook with check. If you go here, it's just uh, queen h2 mate. So after king c3, uh, Artemiev has no choice. He has to continue checking. Queen e5 check. We have king to b3. Queen d5 check. King to b2. And now queen to b5 check. And now finally, bishop to b4 blocking check, but also opening up a discovered check. So king g3, but now it's Fabi's turn. Queen captures on d1. We have queen captures on b4 with check and queen b3. So of course Artemiev cannot trade. He's down a full, full rook. So queen d2 check, king to b1, and now queen to e1 check. We have king to c2, uh, queen f2 check by Artemiev, and finally d2. And it was in this position that uh, Vladislav Artemiev resigned the game as he's down a rook. And once, once the queen gets into the game, doesn't really matter how you can do something like uh, let's say here and go go to e1 or uh, well you just bring the rook into the game there are a lot of ways you can win this white is white is pretty much getting made it very quickly so of course uh, artemiev resigned the game here so a very impressive game by by caruana very impressive tournament by caruana he, he could have just drawn the game at will here against artemiev with the black pieces which like i say it's not a bad deal but for a 2800 player like fabi who is who is also a former world Chess championship um, challenger uh, that is simply out of the question so he wins this game uh, also and uh, just so we uh, don't forget it here are the standings uh, after uh, after 13 rounds of the 2020 Tata Steel Masters edition, Fabi wins the tournament with two full points ahead of Magnus Carlsen. And this is an immense uh, feat because Magnus did not have a bad tournament. He didn't lose a single game. He just drew a lot of games. So <laughs> Carlsen had three wins and all the other games were drawn, whereas Fabi had seven wins and uh, six games drawn. So more wins than draws, that's, that's just insane. Uh, but yeah, you can see that Fabi's rating performance is 2,945, which is just insane. And Magnus says, uh, is only 2,818. Uh, yes, for Magnus, that is an only 2,818 because his, his rating is 2,872. So he actually loses rating if he only performs at 2,818. Uh, but yeah, that, that's what, what it's like uh, when you're Magnus. So really impressive stuff by Fabi. Two full points ahead of Magnus, 10 out of 13. Then Magnus in second place uh, with 8 out of 13, followed by Wesley in third uh, with 7.5. Then uh, Jordan Van Forest with 7, Daniel Lubo with 7. With 6.5, we have Anish Giri, Vishwanathan Anand, Young Krzysztof Duda, Alireza Firuzja with 6.5. We have uh, uh, Jeffrey Shiong, Vladislav Artemiev with 6, Nikita Vitigov with 5, Yuangi with 4.5, and, and Vladislav Kovalev in last place. Uh, the, he, not the greatest of tournaments, but, uh, you know, you, you live and you learn. And also, I, 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 I think, um, 
well, I, I've read that um, uh, I, I still didn't finish watching the tournament, but in the challenger section, uh, David Anton Giharo uh, won the Challengers edition, so he will be participating uh, in the Masters edition next year, like Kovalev did this year, as he won the Challengers edition last year. So we'll see how uh, Giharo will do uh, next year. So yeah, really impressive stuff by Fabi. Uh, definitely, he's definitely one of the favorites in the in the Candidates tournament. I'm also very much interested in who do you who do you have as favorite in the Candidates tournament? Do you see Fabi as taking it again? Do you see Ding? Ding said that he will not be playing any tournaments uh, until the uh, Candidates tournament in April, and he's just uh, training, you know, nonstop for for the Candidates tournament. You know, probably at uh, you know th three three hundred times gravity. Uh, you know. The, uh, He's just going to be a monster at the candidates tournament, and also there's there's Temo Rajabov who who just uh, out of nowhere shows up and wins tournaments. It's just uh, it's just going to be really awesome, and it will be very interesting to see how how young uh, Alexenko will do at the candidates as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm very much interested in your opinion. Uh, wh what do you have at the candidates? Don't forget to check out the link in the description below. It will be uh, it's a trailer one minute long to the Grand Chess Classic. Do check it out. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Diego Romero, uh, Michal Bisok, uh, or Michael Bisok, uh, uh, John Che, William McKay, and Nathan Baker. Nathan Baker, with his contribution, uh, becomes the top contributor to the channel. So congratulations on that, sir. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed this game. I do hope you enjoyed uh, the coverage of this tournament. Um, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing uh, the coverage of the... Well, now we don't have the coverage of anything, but I, I will have to check out some of the games from the Gibraltar Chess Festival, and we are basically continuing the Morphe Saga. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.